call the meeting to order. Please rise and join us for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, may I have a motion uh, for approval of the minutes held July 23rd and August 1st, please? So moved. Or second? Second. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Uh, Bev, no one wishing to address the board? All right. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the agenda, please? So moved. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And good news report, Deanne. All right, good evening. We are just 10 days away from the start of class in the Sioux Falls School District. As you know, we welcome back nearly 24,000 students on Thursday, August 23rd. That said, there are a couple of important pieces of information coming to a mailbox near you if they have not already arrived. And so we wanted to draw your attention in our Good News Report. First to the Ignite publication, that's this publication here up on your screen. The Ignite is considered the district's uh, annual publication that it sends out to all postal customers in the city. It includes important dates, the required legal notices that our schools are required to deliver to all families, and this year information about the upcoming bond election on September 18th, where we will ask voters to weigh in on the proposal that the school board approved on July 23rd. That proposal is a $190 million uh, bond issuance to build a new high school, a new middle school, new elementary, and provide maintenance and upgrades on the areas of safety, security, and accessibility at 14 other locations. So the Ignite publication, um, in addition to all kinds of important school information, also has information that um, we are sharing with voters as well. If your Ignite hasn't arrived yet, it will be coming in the next few days. I know that those were going out of qualified pre-sort and uh, probably uh, being delivered by your mailman soon. Also in your mailbox is the community education catalog with this young Einstein on the front. Um, the catalog is full of fun and engaging classes for the whole family. And I have two team members here with me this evening who will just briefly share um, some of the great classes that are, are available inside the ComEd catalog. Melody Kloiber is our adult programming specialist and Kelly Fay coordinates our youth programming. So they're just gonna say a few words about the classes. Hi. Okay, so yes, the catalog just came out for the fall, so we're really excited. Um, it's always fun to pick new covers, and um, we, you know, we do it as a team effort, so that's always great. Um, but yes, hitting um, mailboxes because we're already starting to get lots of registrations. And Melody and I were just talking how um, it's great to see people signing up for not just one, but several classes too at a time. And I had a lady today that just had to tell me um, with all the things going on in Sioux Falls, she just, she said it was time to get her self-defense, um, her self-defense moves down. So she signed up for two of those and some Tai Chi um, so she could calm down a little bit afterwards too. <laughs> um, but yeah, so she signed up for three classes and she just wanted to let us know that she was so impressed with um, the different offerings that we always have and how much fun it is to look through the catalog and um, so she just wanted to let us know that it was great um, that she had to like to narrow it down because it was really hard to pick the ones that she wanted to do. So that's really great. But yeah, it's fun because I get to do, you know, the youth classes and Melody with the adult ones. So a couple new ones that I have um, this fall are junior printmaking. So doing some like screen printing type, um, but with tools. And so 
they get to transfer the ink onto a surface. And so that's a, that's a fun one coming up. And then we brought back some cooking classes because a lot of the community really wants, um, wants to delve in to, and get their kids into some cooking. So those are a couple of fun ones. And then the braiding classes have just been taking off. And, um, and so to get some of those dads in there that can do their girls' hair too, it's kind of fun just to see um, the different people that take the classes. So yeah, we're really excited for this cat catalog too so I have more I have more facts kind of things so um, we do do uh, we publish two catalogs a year and um, 62,000 of them got mailed out and they looks like they hit mailboxes last Thursday Friday and Saturday so um, as of this morning we already have 708 registrations um, there's 330 classes in this catalog, and then if people, if the classes fill and they can put themselves on a wait list, we end up adding probably another 30 to 40 classes throughout this catalog just because of they filled. So um, one of the classes that filled, we had two classes and uh, wood turning 101, and that's Siouxland Wood Turners, and we hold those classes out at CTE. Been doing it for probably about five years with them now, and um, I called and said, your classes are full, can we add another date? And they don't have time so they do the 101 and then they do a lot of project classes after that too so those are filling and just great um, we've got 65 different partners not including driver's ed uh, Kelly's got driver's ed program too and so all those driver's ed um, men and women who teach and drive so 65 partner instructors just with the classes here so whoops I'm sorry <laughs> um, and just to compare that, our um, catalog we just got done with, which is at the end of July, we had actually just 30 shy of 3,000 registrations between all the programs. So um, fall's a little bit quieter. Um, spring seems to be everybody's ready to go after being cooped up all winter. So, um, But yeah, again, some of the classes we have, a um, lot of language classes. We added a French class at back in this year or this fall, and that one's filling up. Um, a lot of art classes, culinary. We've got French um, confections, which is uh, three separate classes, or take all three as a series, and that's filling up. Um, yeah, just lots of fun classes. We're always looking for classes and instructors. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see in the in the wood turning intermediate the bottle stoppers. Yes. Do they seal enough to keep the fizz in the pop? I assume that's well, for pop. No, not pop. Oh, 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 yeah, okay. okay. You had to ask that question, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. So the stoppers. Yes. Yeah. 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 Is yeah. there priority registration for school board members? Yeah. Well, you know, I got some We can time. talk afterwards <laughs> and see. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. All right, um, before we move on, uh, Kate Parker is not here this evening. She's on vacation, well-deserved, and uh, so we'll be uh, doing our best without her. So um, we'll move on. There are uh, some conflicts of interest that were sent to us uh, from two different people. There were three conflicts, and if, uh, if there are no objections to those, we would, uh, Need a motion to approve those? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Post same sign, that motion carries. And a motion for approval of the consent agenda, please. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Post same sign, that motion carries. Supplemental consent agenda. There are no items there tonight, and we are on to the reports of the superintendent, Dr. Maher. Thank you, President Alberti. The first report tonight is the systematic instruction in phonological awareness, phonics, and sight words. SIPS, Reading Intervention Program Report. Were you wondering if I could get all that out or not? <laughs> that was really good. I was wondering, I know that. Um, this, is, uh, this report will be brought to you by uh, Dr. Boyson, our assistant superintendent in charge of academic achievement. Thank you. Nice job on the title. Thanks. Um, tonight, uh, I bring to you the SIPS Reading Intervention Report to provide information regarding reading interventions to support that early reading um, in our elementary schools. It, it feeds 
um, priority statement one will provide rigorous, effective, engaging curriculum and instruction for all students to emphasize growth and reduce the achievement gap with special focus on literacy in those early grades. Um, when we think about last year and going through the Literacy in Action um, study, what can we do to continue to support those early readers? Sioux Falls District's committed to finding creative and innovative ways to improve literacy and instruction, reduce the achievement gap, and maximizing time for instruction for those struggling readers. The implementation of the SIPS reading intervention requires action taken to achieve long-term goals so all of our students can read by the end of third grade um, on grade level. And we carefully measure and monitor the effectiveness so effective actions are adopted, partially effective actions are adapted, and ineffective actions are abandoned. And so when we look at that research and what's out there, we look to the National Reading Panel, what works clearinghouse, we researched across the nation what's working in other districts. They come up with best practices for effective reading instruction. One is setting clear and rigorous grade level expectations for reading proficiency. Our collaborative classroom um, curriculum does that for us. It sets those guidelines. We conduct frequent measures on student achievement. We're looking to the NWA um, map skills checklist, and that's not something we've used yet, but we are going to use with, um, our, with this SIPS reading intervention and it will give, provide monthly checklists for those teachers and really identify the skills and where they're at. Um, we're identifying struggling readers as early as kindergarten. We use the NWA MAP Spring Assessment, identified students that were at the 41st percentile because 41st percentile is one grade level below. So get those early readers, those um, students at the end of kindergarten. Ensure a balanced core instruction with 160 minutes. So that's that core instruction that we're getting through collaborative classroom and we call it the bar sets, the beginning reader sets. And we are getting that um, through collaborative classroom. The SIPS um, reading instruction will provide 40 minutes a day or we say 200 minutes a week of that intervention of, that, of those foundational skills to help build those readers and explicit teaching of phonics, that's um, right there in that SIPS reading intervention is the phonics and the phonemic awareness. Remediation is connected to um, the core curriculum and the SIPS and reading um, and the collaborative classroom, they're one set and I'll show you that. So that way we can feed right that intervention right back into that core curriculum and they can align very easily and ensure we have highly skilled teachers. And so are we providing professional development for those um, teachers to make sure that they have the best foundation to provide that instruction. So when we look at the SIPS reading intervention program, we're committed to improving that literacy. In this program, we've defined four areas. We have a literacy teacher on special assignment. We have the SIPS curriculum. We have full-time instructional coaches. And we have the SIPS teachers in two of our elementary buildings. And I'm gonna go through each one of those areas for you. So first on that literacy TOSA. The literacy TOSA is a teacher on special assignment that's there to build, um, help those building level co coaches really provide that professional development for the coaches help them in the classroom, identify the skills that are needed. They're there to support the teachers and the administration in those buildings. So that way, we're all talking the same language. We're in there together um, and looking at that information. We'll look at this NWA MAP skills checklist to make sure that the instruction they're giving is outlined and needed and are we making growth. That's the TOSA, the teacher on special assignment. The SIPS curriculum. Um, we have two sets. We have the being, beginning a, being a reader in our core collaborative classroom instruction, and then we have SIPs. And like I said, they feed together, and the difference is the being a reader set, the bar sets, they have a short run and a tall rise on the steps, 
And so that way they're getting the skills and then they move on to that next one. Where with the SIPS instruction, they take a longer on that, um, uh, they have a longer run and a shorter rise. So they have longer to practice those skills before they jump up that next level. So it just gives them a little bit longer to be able to really be strong in those foundational skills. And that's what we're finding our students are needing. And so that's the difference between the two. They're both collaborative classroom products and that's what makes them align very nicely between the classroom core instruction and that intervention with the SIPs. Our next part is the full-time instructional coaches and we have eight buildings that will have full-time instructional coaches and the purpose of their um, full-time being in those buildings is to monitor student progress, make sure that the implementation of that reading program is systematic, they're in there, they're watching that instruction, they're supporting them daily. Um, they're also there when we're analyzing those results and making sure that um, we're using best practices They'll attend those uh, collaborations. They'll make sure that they're talking about the data and they're really looking at um, what's working best and then they can share that out with other buildings. And then we have two buildings that will have a SIPS teacher pilot and those two buildings um, will really work strongly with those first grade students. So we, again, we looked at kindergarten students at the 41st percentile, these buildings had a higher percentage, so they will have one teacher dedicated just for that intervention, and they will work in small groups in that flooding time, and they'll have about five to six students in that time. They can see seven groups a day, and their sole purpose is with those um, first grade students. 55 lessons in that SIPS curriculum, so we're hopeful that can we get them all through and um, done by Christmas and move on to that next group. I mean, that would be a goal if by Christmas all our first graders were on grade level and we're ready to move on. Um, but knowing that they're able to give them 200 minutes a week of instruction. So those students that are identified, those first grade students will have 200 minutes of intervention per week to be able to support them in those foundational skills. So in summary, we're committed to finding innovative ways to improve literacy instruction, reduce that achievement gap, have our students reading on grade level by third grade. We recognize that some students need that additional work in foundational skills. The implementation of the struggling readers plan includes a literacy TOSA, full-time instructional coaches, the curriculum, and the SIPS teachers, and that'll provide that consistency across those buildings and in those um, grade levels with those teachers. And our goal is to build teacher capacity, provide early intervention necessary for the students to achieve the goal of reading on grade level by the end of third grade. And I would ask that you would acknowledge the report and I'll stand by for any questions. She's, yes. And I should have sent this to you earlier, but I just was thinking that when you were talking about the uh, instructional coach, coaches that will be permanently in those buildings, um, are the, the eight, would that be, how many would be new added to our instructional co coach pool and how many are yep. just being now permanently assigned? Yep. Yep. Good question. When we looked at, we had some full-time instructional coaches already and then when we added, so we added two instructional coaches. Got it, two. So thank you. The TOSA, literacy TOSA, two instructional coaches and then the SIPS curriculum. Okay, thank you. Was there a lot of interest from um, prior literacy in action teachers on this new these new roles? I know that those mm -hmm. are the people who just have a really yeah. big heart for helping kids in reading, and so They're, they have a lot of skill and practice in that too. So. And and experts, mm -hmm. yes, exactly. And there was a lot of interest, and you know, really looking at who are, and that's a hard thing. Who are our very very best, and who are committed um, to really? There's no deviation. We're, you know, we're really going to inspect that. They're going to meet with me monthly. We're going to look at those, at the data. Are we making gains? Are we not? What do we need to do? Are we adjusting it? Collaborative Classroom's been great to partner with. And if we have a question, we get a response with sometimes within six hours wow. uh, and with the research behind it. And so really looking at, we can, I know we can do this, mm -hmm. so. Good. All right, thank you. May I have a motion to acknowledge the report? Second. Discussion. Just 
thank you for responding so quickly because I know we were all concerned what was going to replace uh, literacy in action and knowing that that was not working but looking for something to uh, go forward with the students. So appreciate your fast work on this. Thank you. And and if you know and if it isn't the right thing, we'll look for the next yeah. thing. So. Okay. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, may um, um, all those in favor please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Well, Dr. Boyson isn't going very far as she's also going to deliver the next report regarding staff development. Good evening, staff development. And as Deanne Conrad said, 10 days until the beginning of school and we are in full gear right now getting ready for um, the beginning of the year. So the staff development report is very timely. Um, staff development, priority statement one, Sioux Falls School District will provide support and train staff to encourage innovation and enable them to grow throughout their careers. And so that staff development report um, will outline all the different areas that we have provided training throughout the summer um, in preparation for the 2018-19 school year. The district staff have organized and implemented activities for all these different groups, our custodial, our clerical, educational assistants, related service providers, our specialist teachers, administrators, and substitute teachers. And so when you think about the training for 3,000 plus employees, everybody gets fed in that process to make sure that they have what they need to do their jobs well. Um, some of the summer opportunities we have provided um, focused on collaboration, culturally responsive practices, social emotional learning, response to intervention. And then we had three groups go through the peer access and group equity or our page training this summer, um, and which continues to help build that capacity and feed that culturally responsive practices. And when you think back, we've been doing that for five years. And so um, it's really helped developing our staff in that area. Focus trainings, we had some different focus trainings throughout the summer. Our administrators went through the sheltered instruction observation protocol or our SIOP training, and that was to help deepen their understanding of the co different components of SIOP, SIOP, but also give the feedback to their teachers focused on those strategies, and that was well received. Middle school information computer technology teachers or our ICT teachers um, during the spring last year went through a cyber security online course with Dakota State University and they continued that work this summer up at Dakota State. They spent a week with them writing curriculum focused on some sta um, the computer standards and then they spent a week helping um, middle school camps. And so they got to what they wrote the week before, they got to implement with them, and now they br they're bringing that back um, to work with our students in our classrooms in the Sioux Falls School District. Code to the Future, uh, we are implementing that at two middle schools this year, and so those middle school science teachers had training for two days last week, and then our elementary, our three elementaries had a refresher training and what's new this year and how to implement in that into their classroom. We had two days with Collaborative Classroom. Again, they continue to support us with that curriculum, best practices in literacy and teaching and learning, and the Boys Town Well-Managed Classroom. And those were some of our specialized trainees that were more focused. Our back-to-school trainings started last week with our educational assistants and they had trainings uh, in SIOP, crisis prevention training, top 20, and Boys Town, and really focused on the areas um, that best fit them. This morning, we kicked off our new higher orientation over at Lincoln, and we welcomed 129 new to the district teachers, and then we had some additional teachers that were ours um, that, that transferred and changed positions. And of those 129 new to the district, 61 are brand new, zero years experience. And so it was a fun day. It was a really fun day to see um, the excitement and the questions that they had, really good questions. When we talked to the curriculum coordinators, they said, 
these are great. Teachers are asking great questions and they're ready to go. And so Kello was out, they did a spotlight on one of the new teachers today too. Um, so that was fun and exciting. Last week, Human Resources met with all of them, getting them ready, making sure they have all our information on benefits. And then, next, and then Friday will be our curriculum day, Friday and Monday, and we'll focus on curriculum specific to those areas for those teachers. We piloted something new um, with our clerical this year, and we used Schoology, our learning management system, just that was the first rollout, and so we pushed out to our clerical part of their in-service, and they, when it worked for them, they, it provided flexibility and level-specific topics and training materials, so they clicked on the link for Schoology. Um, they could hear information from Molly Satter on health services, finance from Bud Chase, community relations from Deanne Conrad, homeless and Indian Ed from Tracy Jensen, and then all the documents were right underneath the video link um, where they were talking about their training and they could provide comments. I looked at our analytics on that right before I walked in here and we've had 2,500 hits on that in the last week and we have comments um, because the last piece was a survey because I want feedback for that and the feedback is good. And so that's one piece of it. The other piece, they went out and worked with Allie Workus out at ITS to receive more of that um, computer-specific training. So I think it's a good blend that we'll continue to explore. And so that was fun to roll that out for them. And then Monday, Teach Like a Pirate. Um, we will have all our teachers and educational assistants together to hear Dave Burgess, who specializes in hard to reach, hard to motivate students with engaging techniques. And he uses the PIRATE acronym. P is for passion, I is for immersion, R is for rapport, A is for asking and analyzing, P is for transformation, and E is for enthusiasm. So it's going to be a fun morning um, to get them fired up. You know, that's one of the pieces, our educational assistants learning right alongside our teachers because it takes a team and they're a team and we want them together. And so that will be Monday. And we're off to a great start when you think about um, the beginning of the school year and, and all the trainings that have taken place but will continue to take place before next Wednesday and then the students starting on Thursday. We identify areas to emphasize. We look at staff needs and listen to what they're looking for. Um, job specific trainings and then all the trainings that are going on in the building. So I'd ask that you acknowledge the staff development report for 2018-19 and stand by for any questions. Questions for Teresa. And I see that we have one of our new employees has joined us this evening, uh, Allison Strzok, who is our first full-time uh, Education Foundation Executive Director. And I believe the Education Foundation has made a commitment to the 69 brand new, never been in the classroom before teachers of $200 to help them set up their classroom. So welcome to the district and thank you for being here. And she presented that information this morning at great. our um, new teacher orientation. And so what a great gift for those teachers coming in. So yeah. thank you. Yeah, that, that'll help save uh, their moms and dads from helping <laughs> do some of that. I speak from experience. So uh, that is right. thank you very much. Any other questions for Dr. Boyson? If not, may I have a motion to acknowledge the report, please? So moved. Second. Further discussion? If not, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those same sign. The motion carries. Our final report this evening is a consolidated application for federal funds. Here to present that information is Ann Smith from Curriculum Services. Good evening. The South Dakota Department of Education is required by the Every Student Succeeds Act to collect plans from each school district describing how that district will address the requirements of ESSA, as well as the specific activities that the district will implement with the allocations that come down through the different sections of ESSA, Title I, Title II, Title III, and Title IV. Title IV is a new program under ESSA 
It's called Student Support and Achievement. It is one program that is a little more flexible than the others and also has the ability, we have the ability to transfer some of the money out of ESSA and into Title I or Title IIA, wherever we would choose to do it, if it would work better for us in those programs. It's not very often with federal programs, you get that kind of flexibility. If you look at the overall allocations that we received, I put together a table showing over the last three years, and overall, when you put all of them together, our funding is slightly up for the federal programs, but you'll see that the amounts within the, each program have fluctuated. Last spring, we were particularly concerned because we had heard from the Department of Education that Title I and Title IIA would be down, and you'll see that those were down. Um, Title I, not as far as they kind of suggested it might be, so that was a pleasant surprise but the most pleasant surprise was seeing what that Title IV allocation came in because we had not heard any rumors that that was gonna look like that. If you look at how we use the, how we're proposing to use, we have not yet gotten final approval, but um, if you look at how we're proposing to use the funds under each of the programs, we have 10 schools that we've identified as Title I schools. So they'll be receiving funds through Title I Part A, which is the largest program under federal programs. If the, as you look at the big things that we'll be doing with the, those monies, it will be things like class size reduction to lower the sizes of the classes at kindergarten and first grade, um, as well as some class size reduction at the elementary immersion center. Some of the funding for the SIPS program that you heard about will be coming through the Title I Part A funds. We've got some behavior intervention supports that we pay for, as well as early childhood is a big one that we're using Title I funds, as well as success coordinators. The elementary instructional coaches, eight of the elementary instructional coaches are paid for through Title I, uh, as well as some of our ELL teachers and then professional development for the buildings as well as for the computer science immersion program that we've got coming down through Code to the Future. And then we also take, we are required by the law to provide equitable services to private schools. So there's a per pupil formula amount for students who are attending the private schools who if they had been in our schools would have been in a Title I school. So we use that money, we actually provide the services, we determine how much service to provide based on that dollar amount that's based on a per pupil allocation. Title I Part C is a subset of Title I. That was a funding that if you think back to that table, we were up for Title I Part C. It is a fairly restrictive program. It can only pay for things that directly benefit students who qualify as migrant. To qualify as migrant, their parent has to have moved within the last three years to obtain qualifying work. Work in an agricultural industry. You might wonder why in the world would someone be in Sioux Falls working in agricultural industry? Well, meat packing counts, so a lot of these are, um, Children whose families are working at Smithfield um, have had families who are working, actually commuting all the way over to Worthington to work in the Swift plant, um, but their children would still qualify as migrant. We use our migrant funds to pay for school home liaisons. We also do a parent university. Many of these families are ELL, or English language learners. So English is not their first language. Um, we have a parent university and they're coming and they're learning not they're learning to speak to better their English skills, but they're learning it by, by learning what their children are doing in school and how they can support them at home. We also do play for 17 preschool slots, which actually funds 34 preschool students. Again, those students would have to come from families that qualify as migrant. And we do pay for some tuition for high school students who want to attend summer school. Another section of Title I is Part D, Neglected and Delinquent. This can pay for funds that directly benefit students who qualify as neglected and delinquent. Typically they have had some encounter with the juvenile justice system or Department of Social Services. Um, 
This is one of the programs that funding has been pretty steadily declining all of the last three years. We use the funding to pay for a reading teacher at Summit Oaks and VOA, as well as a 0.5 math teacher at the Juvenile Detention Center, and also a 0.5 transition coordinator to help keep track of the data as the students are coming in and out. Many of the, these students are in and out of programs over the course of one year, two years. We also use some of the money to pay for success coordinators for dropout prevention. Um, you can use the money as long as we have a significant proportion of the students who are in those institutions who come back, come back to our district, we're allowed to use the money for dropout prevention. Title II Part A is designed to support district efforts to ensure that every student is taught by a highly effective teacher in an effective learning environment. We propose to use funding to pay for nine of our elementary instructional coaches. So at the elementary level, our instructional coaches are either paid out of Title I or Title IIA. At the other two levels, middle and high school, they are paid out of district funds. We will also be using the, these funds to help pay for the computer science immersion training at our middle schools. Computer science immersion is moving up to Whittier Middle School and McGovern Middle School. So those teachers were in for a couple of days, a couple of weeks ago. And then of course the Code to the Future coach will be in their buildings one day a week throughout the whole school year. We also use the funding to pay for Boys Town training and a lot of the staff development that you just heard Teresa talking about, much of that ends up being paid for through the Title II, a part, Title II Part A funds. A new piece that because of that transferability from Title IV, we were able to put some money into Title II Part A to help pay for the teacher pathway and teacher internship programs that are new this year, where we're working at getting, growing some of our own to help build the diversity amongst our teaching ranks. And then again, under Title II Part A, there is a requirement for us to provide equitable funding for the private schools to provide professional development. Again, it's that whole piece of because they're paying and contributing to the federal tax dollars, make sure that their students are benefiting as well. Title III, one of the other programs that has been declining over the last three years is the program that is intended to help English language learners learn to speak, read, write, and comprehend the English language with sufficient proficiency to meet high academic standards. Title III can be used to supplement the core program, but our core program for our English language learners has to be paid for with district funds because that is a civil right. It's not something that we can choose whether or not we do. It's something that we have to do. But the Title III funds help us improve that program we use it to pay for education assistance to support middle and high school students, as well as to provide an instructional coach to help all of our ELL teachers and to provide SIOP training for new teachers, as well as to pay for the English as a new, lang English as a new language endorsement coursework. We encourage our teachers to get that endorsement because the best thing is if the classroom teacher that the kids are with all day, every day, is fully, is, has good expertise and fully cognizant of all of the ways that they can help their students learn best. Title IV, I referred to a couple times as the new program, Student Support and Academic Achievement. You can spend this money in three different categories and there actually is a requirement for how much you have to spend out of each of the categories, what percentage. You can use it to help do things to ensure a well-rounded education. We're proposing to help pay for a portion of that SIPS reading intervention. You can, we're also proposing to use it to launch the new yoga class in our high schools. This was a class that we piloted last year. It's been well received, so the high school PE folks have been working on it this summer and that will be, there will be a section offered in all three high schools this fall. We also you set aside some of the money for AP exam fees. There are students who want to take the AP exam. They may not qualify for free or reduced lunch, so they don't qualify for the supports that come with that, but they may still have financial challenges, especially if they're taking two or three AP exams. So this provides a fund that we can use to help pay for that. 
Another category we can use is to fund activities that improve conditions for learning. This gave us the opportunity to pay for a new pilot program. It had gone through the budget process, but this allows us to use the federal dollars to pay for it, um, the Eagle Vision program that they're launching at McGovern Middle School this fall, as well as to pay for a counselor for the Joe Foss Ombudsman program and 1.0 middle school success coordinators. Those are, pro, those are positions that have existed before, but we were using Title I Part D, which has been declining. Um, again, the benefit is now we have an additional fund that we can pull from so that we can continue doing things that we know work well. And then the final area is to enhance the use of technology. So we'll be using some of the money to continue, especially focusing on professional development for the librarians who have been implementing maker spaces in the school libraries. Um, they launched those maker spaces with a state grant. So now we'll be able to use the federal dollars to help pay for professional development for them to continue. Um, we'll also be paying for a new, pro, a new program called Tableau which allows us to pull in data from all of our various data systems and then interpret that data, put it together in different ways and visualize it in different ways. So it's, it's a powerful program. We'll be doing some work with our principals so they understand what they can do. Doug Morrison and Nicole Hansen have been working at putting together how you bring all that together and put the prompts in place so that people then can start um, digging in and seeing what the data is saying. And then finally, uh, we'll be using some of these Title IV funds to pay for Schoology, which Teresa just told you about, we used for the clerical in-service. This is a learning management system. We are launching it initially this year for professional development with the intention of getting teachers used to it for their own learning. And then depending on their reaction to it, if they fall in love with it, we'll work at rolling that out so that they can use it with their students and use it in classes to begin personalizing learning through the Schoology environment. Um, just to kind of give a quick high overall, so what do we do with federal funds? I went through and took the total amount and looked at how, we sp how much of it goes to salaries and benefits. Take into consideration that that purchase services, the green 27%, most of that is early childhood. And the way we account for our early childhood, the early childhood salaries actually are in that purchase services. So at least two thirds of the purchase services is early childhood teacher salaries and EA salaries. So um, you can see that the bulk of our federal funding is actually going to pay for teachers who are directly impacting our students. Another way that you might divide it out and look at it is to say, okay, so how much goes to student services? Again, here you'll see you've got the preschool at, and direct student services. So about two thirds is direct services to students and then professional development. 4% uh, goes to parent activities and 2% to equitable services for private schools. And then there's some administration and indir indirect costs that are about 2%. So. And that is the report on the proposed federal co consolidated application. I would ask that you would acknowledge the report. Questions for Ann. May I have a motion to acknowledge the report? So moved. Second. That's a lot of stuff <laughs> to keep track of. Thank you for your hard work doing that. Um, it, uh, I mean, we know from having done what we've done here for a while, how important those federal programs are and how that helps us to ex extend the services that we can offer to our students who are most at risk and most at need. So um, we, we appreciate your hard work and your extensive knowledge of all of that. So thank you for that, yeah. Any other discussion? If not, uh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We are on to policy. 
All right, um, so at our work session this month, we took the time to go through the B policies. And uh, so we'll just kind of run through these quickly. Um, we do try to keep them updated um, on a like cyclical review process to make sure that we're not overlooking anything. And so, um, as I mentioned, we did look at the B policies. Um, if you look at um, the agenda 11, or yeah, 11A through X, um, in looking at all of these, most of them just included minor language changes or updates to specific legal references. So no um, major policy changes or anything like that. So they are just slotted for review, revise. Um, so if I could get a motion to um, approve 11A through X as review, revise, as we discussed. So moved. Second. They've been out on the district website, no been. comments, yep. so. Um, okay. uh, again, no major changes at all, so. Okay. We have motion and a second. Any discussion, questions for board member Ryder? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries, and may I get a motion to go into exec session. Um, move to go to executive session, South Dakota Codified Law 1-25-23. All right, thank you.